calling out all my nerds, freaks, and geeks. It's mob time. Don't tune in, cut the show time. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rise, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. What's up, y'all, and welcome to the Blur Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I am your host, Foop, joined by my co-host, Ron. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. And if you nerds, freaks, and geeks are watching us on YouTube, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn those bell notifications for future uploads, and leave a comment down below and let us know what you thought about the episode. All right, all right. So we're entering episode 49 of the Blurred Mob podcast. Our topics for today, we're going to be talking about the House of the Dragon controversy following George R.R. R. Martin's blog post about what went wrong with season two. And we're going to be talking about Sony's statement of saying that they don't have enough original IPs across the board. So before we get into the conversation, how you doing today, Ryan? Man, chilling, just out late. Out in these streets, just having a good time. There's a he lot of stuff going on streets. in the streets. My boy look, said he I, back in the streets. Look, going out to eat. That's about it. <laughs> but life's good. The weather's cooling down out here. It's mm-hmm. fall, so fair season coming up. Oktoberfest coming up. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, How I was talking living? to my cousin yesterday. She was outside, and she was like, yeah, it's starting to cool down. Like, it's starting to get, like, in the 70s at night. Mm-hmm. So that's what's up. Yeah, it's get, it's getting cooler. We're getting some reprieve from the summer. Some reprieve from that three-digit weather. Hey, I don't mind the three-digit weather, but when I have to go to work in, like, pants and a T-shirt and, like, be fully dressed, I'd be like, nah, this ain't it. Look, I'd be wanting to go out in, like, some swim trunks. That's what I'm saying, like, if I... Like if I could go out and just have on like shorts and a tank top, you know, I'm you know, my slides, sandals, you know, I'm chilling. Like this mm-hmm. is this is what this weather is for. But when I have to go to work fully dressed and it's a hundred degrees outside, they don't give. It ain't it ain't giving what it's it supposed to be. It got to one of those a hundred degree weather days and the air on my floors decided to go out. So it's like four PM, three PM, four PM, like peak time, peak heat. And it's just continuously getting hotter. And I was like, see, it's one thing to be hot and outside, but hot outside. And then you go back in and it's still hot. I was like, yeah, I got to go home. My stuff no, wasn't working anyway. My code wasn't working anyway. I was like, yeah, it's time to go because this is this ain't working. Would have been inside with a quickness. I I went home with the quickness, like <laughs> inside, hot inside and outside. Oh, no, sir. That's crazy, bro. Absolutely I'm, not. It's so hot out here. If you if you don't got no air conditioner, it's like a death sentence in Texas. Man, mm-hmm. I used to hate the summers when I was back at home in Mississippi, where it'd be like the middle of July and the air go out. And it's humid out there, so you got Man. them insta sweats. Yeah, nasty work. Nasty work. Let's get into our first topic of today. So as I mentioned, there's been some controversy surrounding House of the Dragon. On August 30th, George R.R. Martin stated that he would release a blog post stating um, the things that had, in his opinion, went wrong with House of the Dragon Season 2. On September 4th, he did drop that blog post. It's been deleted, but it was been called Beware the Butterflies. It didn't give a full like layout on what went wrong with House of the Dragon Season 2, but what we did get was some possible repercussions that might be coming based on how they handled the blood and cheese situation. So the biggest thing coming out of Blood and Cheese is that House of the Dragon Season 2 eliminated one of Aegon's and Helena's children uh, Prince Maelor. So they're supposed to have three kids. But in the House mm-hmm. of the Dragon, they only had the two kids. And now at this point in House of the Dragon, they only have one kid. But in the book, they were supposed to have two left. And basically, George R. R. Martin was saying is that the ch- the third child still being there, um, though it's not so bad that he wasn't included in season two, the way that it's supposed to be. Your voice just went out, food. Yeah, it's out right now. You stopped after saying, um, 
though the third child is thinking there it ain't bad, but it was supposed to do something. I can't hear you now. What about I now? I can hear you now. Keep going. Okay. I don't know what's been going on with Riverside and my microphone. Because you yeah. were rolling, too. I was like, dang. Yeah. Okay. Rewind. So, George R. R. Martin said the, um, not them not including the third Targaryen child isn't a big deal, but it can have some consequences on how they plan on handling Helena's fate. Um the whole situation with Renera about to return to King's Landing and some other pieces. So he was saying that depending because they excluded at the child, we might have some issues coming up in the next two seasons. But what the confusion was for me is that before season two came out, like George R. R. Martin was given like season two praise and now we're getting to like a month or so after the season ended and now it's like oh now here's all these problems we may have some issues going towards season three and season four so i'm kind of just trying to see what the disconnect was it makes me wonder like is he under like contractual agreements and that's why he says and does certain things and maybe he just doesn't know them or like Even though he was involved, maybe he just gave a little input here and there, but he wasn't just like down in the trenches with the writers and directors. So he did say, so here's the other like, I won't say confusing piece, but here's another tidbit. So he did say, it seemed like he was involved because he did say he was talking to, you know, the creator, Ryan, the co-creator, Ryan Condal, about it when they mentioned that they weren't going to include the third Targaryen child. And he he said he argued against it, but he didn't argue heavily. Like he conceded, I won't say pretty quickly, but he conceded to the fact that they weren't going to include him. He even went as far as to state when he watched the episode, he liked the way that HBO and the House of the Dragon team had executed Blood and Cheese. But I guess maybe after he slept on it for a couple of days, then it's like, mm, maybe we shouldn't have done that. It, but the funny thing is, it's something so small, not saying from George R. R. Martin's perspective, but like, why would they leave out the kid? Like, it's not like they just had to heavily emphasize the kid. They ain't emphasize her other kids for real. So they were going into the fact um, what HBO and Ryan Condal are defending is that because of the episode count, because of how so much they had to adapt and going back to our mob review, which I was able to confirm this through one of his statements is that fire and blood is written as like a history book. So if okay. we're going from history book to series. Some things have to, you know, be um, exaggerated, dramatized to fit mm-hmm. for TV and film. And their defense was that, you know, we given, you know, the episode count, the budget that we had, some things had to go. And his defense to George R. R. Martin was like, us eliminating the third Targaryen child, Prince Maylor, in season two doesn't mean that he's not gonna show up in season three. But I guess given the way that everything is supposed to play out and compared to the books, that it seems like George R. R. Martin still has concerns even though he conceded to the argument in the first place. Yeah, because the king said his sausage blew up like barbecue in a fire. So it's like, where's the other kid going to come from anyway, unless Helena's like, got a new baby daddy or something. Exactly. So maybe, so my thing is, George R. R. Martin, he said he watched the first two episodes or at least from what I saw from the article I read, he watched the first two episodes and gave it a thumbs up. It is possible that he didn't see the rest of the series. So now with him watching the series in full, bringing up the point that you just brought up with Aegon not being able to reproduce anymore, then it's like, uh uh-oh, now how is this all supposed to play out? Exactly. Uh, I don't know, because like... It does make me worry a little bit because the quality of writing in season two was lesser. Seems like it deteriorated from season one. Mm -hmm. And it makes me worry because I don't want this to be another situation where like 
TV producers and writers just feel like they have a better vision than the original source material, the original writer, because it seems like y'all already kind of deep do, um dropped the ball with season two. Y'all did good with season one, so it's not like we can just judge immediately. I think in our mob review, it was like let's watch season three and then see how they handle everything because mm-hmm. they still like one for one at the moment. But it, it's a little worrisome. Maybe George R. R. Martin just be complaining. Maybe he's just one of those old dudes, but at the same time, he was kind of on the ball when he was complaining about Game of Thrones. Right, but I wonder, just to play devil's advocate, I wonder if he would have said anything if House of the Dragon wasn't receiving um, the reviews that it's getting. Like when one he, of those, I take in, credit when it's good, but I don't take credit when it's bad situations. Right, because given that I didn't hop into Game of Thrones until we were like towards like the end of them lively releasing season seven, and then we had to wait for season eight, I wonder like what was his commentary as each season was coming out. And if he wasn't putting out any commentary until we got to season eight when everybody was like, nah, what the fuck is this? What's going on? We hate this petition, petition, petition. And then he was like, okay, I need to speak up. This is kind of getting out of hand. Right. I don't know. Cause it depends on how much he cares because like I jumped on to game of Thrones when season five was airing, mm-hmm. but I wasn't actively on those social media in those social media communities. Mm-hmm. But, but it reminds me of like, you know the Witcher series on Netflix. Mm-hmm. On the video games, the original writer for the books that everything's based on, he told the game directors, like, I don't even want no proceeds. Y'all ain't finna do nothing with this. People should correct me if I'm wrong. But basically, he didn't think the game was gonna do well. He was like, gaming? That's not going anywhere. Just for the Witcher games to blow the hell up. Mm-hmm. And he's like, that's my story. Y'all owe me some money. But it's like in the contractual agreements, you personally said y'all ain't gonna do nothing. So it makes me wonder if George R. R. Martin is like, eh, if y'all do good, all the praise come to me. I'm gonna get my books sold in the um at books a million. If all y'all do bad, uh uh-uh, uh, y'all ain't diminishing my quality as an author. Like, was there like a divide? Did he just not see hope in the series, or did he just get confused? I I don't know. I just I don't know what the deal is because I know after season one, he came out and made some statements. Um, but he didn't write, like, I don't remember him writing like a whole blog post of like, even in a positive context, I don't remember him writing a whole blog post about what I liked about House of the Dragon season one. He just said his couple statements and went about his day. But like for you to write a whole blog post about what went wrong with season two, and then coming off the fact that you kind of, so I don't think he wrote a whole blog post, but you kind of sort of doing the same thing for Game of Thrones season eight. I wonder if it's just like, look, just for CYA, I didn't, you know, approve some of this stuff. I tried to warn them. And if season three and season four turns out to be trash, boo-boo garbage, I just want to let you guys know it's not my fault. And my whole thing is like, can't you get that stuff written in a contract? Like you got enough clout, praise, money to pay for good attorneys. Like if you really wanted that much buy-in into the writing process, you can get that written in a contract. And Netflix did it with um Oda. When it came to One Piece, like they made sure he was there and he was and he gave the thumbs up. So I'm like, did you not care while you was there? I wonder if it's just. I wonder if it's just something maybe that just happened between season one and season two, because season one went up Mm -hmm. like uh, out of the two seasons, that's the best season so far. And I wonder if he just didn't feel the need to like hold on to the reins or have like full control or have like a heavy foot in what was going on and then when season two came out it was like okay maybe i should have but you guys did so well with season one i didn't feel like i had to or i needed to but why would you act like that being that you were really upset with got is it because you just like this writer and producer better than um the other two guys or what because, like, don't you think if somebody saw what happened to season eight, they would be like, you know what, let me fix my franchise, let me but that's fix what I'm my saying. wrongs? But that's what I'm saying. Season one was the test run. And season one did so well that maybe he'd loosen the reins a little bit with how they were developing season two. And now we're getting to the end of season two, and I was like, ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Even Game of Thrones had an amazing seasons one through five and six, though. But, I, but I'm just saying, though. 
I'm yeah. just saying. But the but the other thing is is that because I've read the first Game of Thrones book and the first Game of Thrones books feels he- heavily narrative to me. Like you you have different characters' perspectives. Like it gives like that whole book is written, um, or season one of Game of Thrones is basically the book verbatim. Exactly. So Game of Thrones, I feel like the difference between Game of Thrones and um, House of the Dragon with Fire and Blood is that Game of Thrones books one through five is based basically here. Here what you need to do. Here's the narrative. Here's the drama. Here's the exaggeration. Here's all of it. Exactly. And then if we're coming from Fire and Blood of the fact that it's written like a history book, then you already have a disconnect between how Game of Thrones was written and how Fire and Blood is written. But we're supposed to. But TV wise, media wise, we're supposed to be producing equal forms of content, but the background is not the same. And that's where I can personally give at least the Game of Thrones writers, like the, the showrunners, some grace. Because it's like, yeah, if it's history, you do have the freedom to say, like you mentioned earlier, it was exaggerated. But my whole thing is if George R. R. Martin was like, nah, this shouldn't be exaggerated, this should be real. Why ain't you giving those clip notes? Why didn't you fight for it? Based on this blood and cheese situation, he did argue. He said he didn't he didn't argue strongly enough. Eventually he conceded. Okay. Given that Ryan Condo's reason was like, hey, even though he may not show up in this season, there's a possibility that he may that he will show up in season three, season four. Like, even though he's not showing up in season two, that doesn't mean he's not going to show up later. And then based on that, George R. R. Martin kind of like, okay, sure. And they went on well, with it. How can they speak in parables like that? Yeah, like, you the, show, you the showrunner. What you mean they could possibly show up? Like, you ain't just going to tell the man, like, yeah, he's coming. <laughs> he's not coming. Like, what? what is that? <laughs> Foop, like, come on now. We on a contractual agreement for, like, a fourth season show. I, you never know, Foop. They might come in the future. Like, I feel like, yeah that that part and maybe he had, could have argued stronger and i don't know if it was just he had to go home and sleep on it maybe he had mm-hmm. to see the episode and then he had to go and sleep on it maybe because when the blood and cheese episode came out i saw tons of people are saying oh man they dumbed down blood and cheese this is how how it happened in the book um I didn't feel any emotional attachment to this scene. Like there was a lot of people complaining about it. And then maybe the complaints versus his, with his decision that he conceded, I won't say quickly, but he conceded into doing what, what Ryan Condo said. And then all of it's catching up and he went to sleep on it. He was like, you know what? Maybe I should have fought a little harder. Like, even though I, I understood their reasoning because he said he agreed with both sides. He agreed with his end of they should have kept them. And he also agreed with the other end of like, ah, uh, it's not so much um, of a detrimental factor to the season if they don't put them in there. But maybe with how, when everything was coming out and everybody's reaction to it, he was his needle went to we should have went my way. What's that family got mean when it's like in the green to the yellow to the red? Like, mm-hmm. ah, I'm a little too close. Yeah. Yeah. It, I don't know, because I don't know if I should be worried or not. Like, I, well, no, I, it does make me worry regardless, but it's like, at this point, my guy, you might as well just be in it for with the ride, like the fans at this point. If you're not finna, if you're not finna also announce, yeah, I'm going to that studio, I'm putting in my work, I'm gonna make sure that this turns out to be amazing. Unless you're saying that, I almost don't care about your complaints. Go write the books. Like, that's what it's getting to. Because it's like, do I do we really care about his opinion now if he's not going to do what it takes to fix it? All right. I mean, at this point, I would agree this with you. Point. At this yeah. point, I would agree with you because the season's already out. Everything that happened in season two, if he, if he decides to make another blog post or 16, it doesn't change the fact that season two is out. It doesn't change any of the events that happen. They ha- because when we get to season three and season four, they have to build off what they've already done. So if exactly. you had issues, and it seems like you you had conversations with the showrunners, so if you're going to concede into these decisions and not you know put the fire under their ass with these events, knowing that they could have consequences, if you're not going to put the fire under their ass, then I don't know 
what to tell you. Like, why other than, still other, than the, me? other than the fact that these blog posts are appeasing to book readers of like, why are they doing this? Did George R. R. Martin approve this? And then, you know, he comes out and he was like, well, I wasn't really a fan of it. And they're like, okay, fuck HBO. Then it's, then it's not fuck George R. R. Martin and HBO. It's just fuck HBO. But it's even like, it even goes back to like that little thing when he complained about like the um design of the Targaryen logos mm-hmm. because they didn't, ha- they put, they added, um, hand, they, they did added four hands legs to the dragon. instead of two. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're supposed to be wyverns. I'm like, Okay, maybe you watched it and you didn't notice it because I ain't notice it either. But like, it's too late to complain now, my guy. What they gonna do? Switch it up mid season? I mean, I, like they probably could, but like, they what could. you want? They could. I think when I was reading that complaint, I think his biggest gripe about it is that they start throwing the sigil on top of all the books, so they're printing millions of books with the wrong Targaryen sigil on the front. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's and, funny. Th- and that's where he was like okay wtf i mean and here's the funny thing because like looking at it i was like that's the stupidest thing ever but i get it because i like dragons and i was like yeah the dragons in game of thrones aren't dragon dragons they're wyverns mm-hmm. and i was like ah oh, they messed up the wyvern logo and i was like ah oh, i see what you're saying but still though it's too late to complain yeah it's too late the only thing i'm concerned about is given what he said and how this small um, thing about them not including Prince Maylor and how it's supposed to affect going towards the future. The only thing I'm concerned about is the end. That if they're going to con- if they're going to do these events, and I I feel like well they they have to like some of these events are pretty major. But I think I'm nervous about the emotional effect. Mm-hmm. that some of these events might have based on what he's telling us. Cause he was like the exclusion of Prince Maylor is going to affect the Helena's fate, which is going to affect how King's landing turns on Rhaenyra and how the whole thing ends. But it starts with this one little thing that happens. And if this so one, that's, so that's now kind of a spoiler. So we know Rhaenyra is getting King's landing now. I mean, we kind of knew that, but I it's feel like still. It, yeah, but I, I just, I honestly just feel like I, because I said this in the review. We've all seen Game of Thrones. We know how Daenerys' thing starts out. So I feel like you guys can't walk in the house of the dragon and be like, "Oh, this shit's just gonna turn out to be," you know that. A okay ending. Like, no. House of the Dragon got a lot of new fans. There's a lot of people who be like, are you a part of the group who's never watched Game of Thrones? And they could be like get like thousands of likes on Twitter. I feel like if if that felt like a spoiler, I apologize. <laughs> but I kind of feel like based on the way season two ended, we know that is going to King's Landing. Mm-hmm. So now how she's getting there, what she's gonna do when she gets there. I mean, I feel like those may be a bit too in depth of spoilers. I don't know, but I mm-hmm. feel like we know she's going. That that's the whole point. That was the whole. Just the whole point of the the damn thing is to get back over our, there. Our queen is getting King's Landing. Now that's so. I apologize. Spoiler. I apologize if that felt like a spoiler, <laughs> but. My concern is is that some of the events, if they're going to keep, because they're going to continue with these eight episode seasons, and I just feel like the same thing that we talked about with season two, like with some events not having strong emotional value or we're, we're doing something, and then it's like, okay, next episode, next case. Exactly. And we're just like, okay. Because it's like, I, 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 all them Damon in the Haunted Mansion scenes, y'all could have had Maylor right there. Maylor could have been born within those five minutes that we mm-hmm. saw Damon in that in that Haunted Mansion. Yeah. So that that's my only concern. Cause like even in Game of Thrones, like they had like small things happen that had like huge consequences, like in future mm-hmm. seasons. And it was like if you'll be like, oh, they did do that. I didn't really think anything was going to come out of that, but shit. Yeah. So, but at the same time, Game of Thrones had, you know, they basically had the blueprint from the books. 
they had the 10 episode seasons and which is some of the things that house of the dragon is missing yeah so at the same time I could also argue that HBO is doing the best with what they got. It just makes me wonder, though, like. When it comes to these types of budgets and everything, why did y'all stop at eight? Like the shareholders just say, ah, Game of Thrones did so bad with the last two seasons. We don't trust it because I feel like with how good season one of House of the Dragon did, they would have like upped it and did 10 episodes for season two because the return on investment will be higher. I just wonder if it's just budget like money. HBO might be broke or something. Like, I don't know. Like, you have, you, when you have to divide, like, I just, I know those Game of Thrones episodes took like millions of dollars to make. It wasn't like the last one of season eight, like 20 some million dollars or something something like that. Something like that. They were spending millions of dollars on those episodes. And I, as much as they want to do 10, like the amount of money that they have to spend. I don't know. It just don't make sense. Yeah, and I wonder if... Because see, how many episodes was season one? Was season one 10 episodes? Of GOT or House of the Dragon? House of the Dragon. I believe it was eight as well. Was it? Let's confirm. Google search. Google search. Let's do a Google search. No, season one had 10 episodes. So why are they dropping in season two? I want, Like I said, I wonder if it's just money. I don't know. But that's my thing. Dropping it after a successful season one, is that not weird? That is weird. I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. That is weird. And then to continue the rest of the series with eight episodes, I... Because it made sense for the end of GOT for them to do less episodes because they didn't have the source material. The writers wanted to move to Star Wars, just for them when I get it. And it's like, that makes sense. But if I've seen a season one for House of the Dragon doing well and Game of Thrones for fans are like, yeah, it's back. It's back. It's better than Rings of Power. It's better than The Witcher. This is our fantasy live action. Y'all ain't say let's redo this? Or was the ROI just not high enough? Like, even though it did, it was successful, it wasn't as successful as they wanted it to be. I, the only thing I could think of is financial. Because if we look at HBO, because isn't HBO's like parent company Warner Brothers? Or is Warner Brothers a subsidiary of HBO now? I thought we looked that up, and it was Warner Brothers, and HBO was under Warner Brothers. It's one way or another, because all the WB stuff is over there. Okay. HBO itself is a unit owned by Warner Brothers Discovery. Yeah, that's when they merged with Discovery. I remember that, yeah. Okay, so if that's the case... Then if we look at House of the Dragon season one and all of the issues that's come out financially with Warner Brothers Discovery, it seems like the budget dropped and they had to do eight episodes. And Warner Brothers, when it comes to all their subsidiaries, was making a lot of different games and different stuff, too. And some of them ain't do the best. Mm hmm. So it sounds like the eight episode thing is just financial reasons. Huh. <sighs> This is why when it comes to business and art, you need business so that art can reach more people. But Mm -hmm. it's like, ugh. I I would just say this. If he comes out with more blog posts, I'm not sure like what's gonna come out of it. I I'm not sure if he I'm not even sure if he should waste his time writing more blog posts because we read it. And then now what? We read it and, and now what? So what now? Like, are you going to do anything different with the next few seasons? Like, that's my thing. Like, I don't think I care about old heads' opinions if they're not finna actually fix the problem. I would say this because you have season two is out. Both of you guys, George R. R. Martin and HBO, got to get in the bed and lay in it. You know. Now, when season three comes, if there's anything that you want to argue for, I would say argue for it harder. Exactly. If if at the end of the season, you're going to come out with these blog posts about what you didn't like about it. And also, why didn't you stand in it? Like, unless it was contractual agreements and somewhere in the contract and your attorney told you, hey, you know, you're not supposed to say anything about the series as the ride, bad about the series as the writer. Unless an attorney came to him and told him that, I don't see why he ain't stand on it either. Like, did like you he feel deleted, bad about it? Like, he deleted the blog posts, like, 
either the same day or maybe a day after he posted it. Like, it's gone. Like, you can't find it at all. That's what I'm saying. Like, unless it was legal, if it's some legal stuff going on in the background, why'd you do that? Stand in what you're saying. If you don't like it, stand in it. And I and I would say if it was a small disagreement, I can understand small disagreements because this kind of this is kind of what it sounds like. We had a small disagreement, but at the end you came to a solution. So if you had a small disagreement and came to a solution, then it's kind of like you know you just sit there and eat your food. This isn't exactly. This isn't the Netflix Avatar situation where the creators of Avatar heavily disagreed with some of the decisions, and heavily disagreed so bad that they left the project. That's not this situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I get it that, you know, when it came to the forefront and it came to everybody's opinions, you may, maybe you felt overwhelmed and you started second guessing of whether, you know, I probably should have fought for this harder. So I feel like as me, as George R. R. Martin, I need to say something. But that, but it's like, what now? Exactly. Like so at this I, point, you just blow and stain. So I would just say the the only leverage you have with Game of Thrones is the fact that the book series isn't finished. That's the only leverage you have about your statements going towards Game of Thrones is because the books aren't finished yet and nobody knows the real ending for sure. My whole thing is, well, Ryder, you writing all these blog posts. How many books <laughs> you want to write? How many more books you want to write for Game of Thrones? Um, I think Winds of the Winter is the sixth book. So I don't, and I don't he, know, I don't know how many he plans on doing like in full. Well, instead of complaining on blog posts, go finish the book. So in five, ten years, we can get a Game of Thrones reboot that stays true to the book, the source material. You see what Harry Potter doing and everybody else? Mm-hmm. Finish the book. Leave a little, leave a legacy. We, me, me and Foop gonna be, we'll be thirty eight years old going back and watching it. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. Re- they might do movies. No one Warner Brothers. They'll do a. They'll do a quick animated movie. Here we go. Nah, Game of Thrones the anime is crazy. <laughs> yeah, they'll do it. They'll do. They'll do a quick anime series, animated movie. They'll do something. Game of Thrones the anime. Oh my god. But um, yeah, that's that's. I would say season three. I hope they have some better conversations. That's all I'm going to say. I hope they have some better conversations. You know, I understand that they have like the limited episode count. They only have so much money. They can only do so much things, but with the things that you, they can do, if there is something that you disagree with as the writer of the book, fight for it. Exactly. Fight for it. So like, I know like with child actors, you know, maybe trying to hire another one, maybe a little bit out of the budget. But hell, they talked about Helena's fourth son. They just talk, 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 and they never showed that man. But we know she got a fourth baby. Exactly. So it's like little thing. Like you can make, you can make compromise. You can make tweets. You can slide that in there. We don't have to physically see a child, but we can at least have the knowledge that one is there. Exactly, because when was the last time we done seen Rainera's other kids of um, what's her name, Bela? Like they, we pre- they pretty much off screen now. Oh, you talking about Raina, um, the ones that Raina, the one where yeah, now that she done left them abandoned, we only saw them seen them kids like what when Rainera sent them on their own and gave them a kiss mm-hmm. on the forehead. Like, come mm-hmm. on now. So I would just say going into season three, I hope they have better conversations. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to get to season three and you just write in blog posts you know what i'm saying like if you're not Finishing having books <laughs> so we'll see so let's move on to our next topic we got the playstation ip situation so one of sony's sony's chief financial officer stated that whether it's for games films or anime we don't have that much ip that we fostered from the beginning now when this came out even you and i had a discussion offline about all of the ips that sony does have that they're not doing anything with to i guess to hone in on what he meant like reading more of the article that i found on uh ign is that mm-hmm. he was referring to like an IP that could be the face of Sony. Like how Nintendo has Mario. Like when you think Nintendo, you go Mario. 
And desk. with Microsoft, you go Halo. Right. So when you think of Sony, what what does your mind go to? If you had to pick one sole character, quickly, without thinking probably, about it. Cr- probably Kratos. God of, Kratos from God of War? Yeah. I can see that, but like... Is it would you put Kratos up there as like brand wise with Mario? No, here's the thing though nobody's touching Mario. Zelda is Link from Legend of Zelda. Folks don't even know that Link's name is Link till this day, but that, but that's still Nintendo. But I think what they're saying is that when you look at Sony, because your answer would be different from my answer, Sony, I might say, damn, Spider Man. I was just and, thinking, hey, and, every, and everybody's answer of like, who do you feel like is the face of Sony is going to be different. But if you ask somebody who's the face of Nintendo, nine times out of ten, somebody's going to tell you, ain't that Mario and them? Well, yeah, but the thing is, Sony ain't finna have Kratos in a kart racing game while also having him fight but against I, other people I, for hand. But I think that's the point. I think that's yeah. the, I think that's the point that they don't they feel like they don't have enough original IPs that they can use at that level as Mario okay. can be used. Mario is driving cars, playing golf, baseball, tennis, basketball, tennis, basketball. He fighting folks, Smash Bros. He done been to the Olympics multiple he times. He done went to the Olympics. He got a billion dollar movie in the box office. That was Sony, really good. Sony, Sony, no tea, no shade. Sony can only do that with Spider Man if they combine it with the shit going on in the MCU. And even Microsoft had a Halo series. It was trash. They've had they've made multiple attempts at putting Halo on film. They were all trash, but they can still do it. So I I understood because when we talked about this at first, I was like, there seems to be a disconnect because they have IPs, but the the sole concern is that they don't have an IP to where you could ask multiple people who's the face of Sony and they would give you the same answer. I get that. Here's the thing. I do get that. But I mean, that's almost not a bad thing because in my because in my opinion, if I look at Microsoft, like Halo's the face, but that's also because Microsoft ain't have that many exclusives before they start doing all these acquisitions. Mm-hmm. Like prior to Halo, like I think the first Assassin's Creed or two was solely on Xbox. But like outside of Halo, what other IPs do Microsoft got? Now with these acquisitions, like before all of these acquisitions occurred in the past five years, what did you think of when you think of Microsoft Xbox? You would say to yourself, I don't feel like playing Halo yeah. or Forza. Yeah. And I was, I, I definitely agree with you. Is that necessarily a bad thing that you guys don't have a Mario, a Sony Mario? Is that a bad thing? Because that's just unique to Nintendo. Part of it is their longevity. Mario has been on even more consoles than Sony and Microsoft has pushed out. Mm-hmm. And let, let's not even go into Donkey Kong and how Mario's brand expands out to other iconic characters. Because mm-hmm. it's not just Mario, it's the Mario franchise. You got Bowser, you got Peach, you got DK, who all had their own games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, I get it, but do y'all know how long it would take? To build like, yeah, there out. couldn't be no Sony land at Universal Studios, but the, yeah, we can make a Mario land. Do you know how long it would take to do that? Y'all gotta make like 10 more Sly Coopers. Yeah. I that's why I don't I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I honestly feel like you I maybe the thing that they're complaining about is the thing that could make Sony unique that we can't just pin them down to one franchise and say this is the face of Sony. That when you think of Sony, you think of on one end of the spectrum Spider-Man, the other's end of the spectrum God of War. Jack and Dexter and all of these other IP franchises that could be the point that makes them unique. See, okay, because when I when I saw the article, I was confused because I'm like, are y'all saying y'all ain't making enough money and y'all don't feel like y'all have enough games that y'all can create? But if it's just a branding thing, even then I'm like, even with my business mind, I can't think of how that's really much of an issue because you have so many brands and IPs that people do appreciate. You can bring any of them back. Y'all can make a kill zone. When was the last kill zone released? They they I don't know. But they're saying they're seeing it as an issue. What the article I read said, um 
has enough franchises that it has fostered from the beginning, calling it an issue for the company as it seeks to rival its competitors in the space. It's beating Microsoft. And when it comes to Nintendo, I mean, y'all still out beating them when it comes to graphics. A lot of Nintendo fans are getting sick of Nintendo. You and me have all complained. You and me have complained about Nintendo, and that's not a, my, well, it might be a minority opinion, but the minority has some support. Mm-hmm. In terms of we sick of how y'all doing these graphics, we sick of the fact that Pokemon ain't evolved in years. Like y'all trying some new stuff with Arc- Arceus and all that, but y'all still ain't producing nothing of quality anymore. We still dealing with these long loading screens and etc. I I so, just I I just wonder if they feel like they just don't have a franchise that they could just shoot out and it just makes money like like this. Whoop. Because when that because I because. You just complain about Nintendo, and that's fair. But when Mario Kart 9 drops, damn what? <clears throat> yeah, Mario Kart and Super Smash Brothers at no, this I, point are still guaranteed what? buys. But They're da- guaranteed. Guaranteed buys. Keyword, guaranteed buys. Is it possible that Sony feels like, even though we have all of these IPs and all of these franchises, that it's always a risk that when we put out a game that it's not going to be a guaranteed buy? Well then, is it, well then my issue would be if that's their perspective, is it because you don't have any IPs that you fostered, or is it because not all of your IPs are just family friendly? Because the thing about Mario Kart, even if you're not one of those, I'm a kid at heart and I just grew up on Mario Kart. Mm-hmm. I was playing Mario Kart with my mama when I was eight years old because she could Same. pick it up and play it easily. I was playing Super Mario Sluggers with my dad, and he ain't much of a gamer. He played Dig Dug and Pac Man when he was a kid in the arcade, mm-hmm. but even he could just pick it up and play. I just wonder if because Nintendo has fostered their brand to be family friendly, that they can do stuff like this. And then PlayStation and Xbox are and sometimes seen as mature consoles. And then if we even look at the elite gamer stuff. Right. And even if we look at the games that they're producing now, like some of these games are like mature off the gate. The graphics are insane. Like Mm -hmm. I mean here, here's my thing. Here's my thing. Because the way we was talking about it, we was going from the perspective of, oh, do they just feel like they don't got enough IPs to make video games because Microsoft has right. so many? And my issue, even with that argument, was, well, they're still ahead. Microsoft ain't pushed nothing out yet. Mm-hmm. They ain't pushed nothing. Like, we finna get Call of Duty 6, but it's already uh, understood that they finna have that on Sony and everything, other consoles as well. Maybe they're just looking for, maybe they're just looking for that one one idea that when they come out with it, it latches on and they can push and they can come up with so many different things instead of like, let's go in the bucket. Let's pull out Jack and Dexter. Do you guys think you can do anything with this? Well, the funny thing is it used to be that Sony was the only console you could play JRPGs on, but now it seems like Microsoft is starting to build those relationships with Japanese publishers and Nintendo being that it's already out there. If the game ain't too um, demanding on the Mm -hmm. processing power and graphical power, Nintendo will have it on the Switch. So, I guess it also depends on what market they're trying to play into as well. I, I, feel like, I feel like, I feel like, because it sounds like, because the article specifically mentioned Mario, they said that they were referring to the business as a whole, which is lacking in homegrown properties on the scale of, say, Mario. And... Nothing will touch Mario. There's nothing but, that's going but, to touch Mario. And that's fair, but also like how you just mentioned, Mario is like E for everyone, from like Gen Z all the way up to our parents. Like anybody can play Mario. A Mario game can come out right now and you can get the whole community sitting down on the couch and playing Mario Kart. I feel like that's what they want. Like everybody just can't sit on the couch and play Spider Man. My dad's not gonna play Spider Man. My mom I, ain't either. That's what I'm saying. But but that's the thing though. Like, it, like okay, I'm gonna concede to this. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But the effort to make Mario, Mario is literally like just look at the history. He's a regular plumber. <laughs> the man goes up and down pipes. Like in retrospect, if I was to pitch that to you now and you knew nothing about Mario, you're like, what type of stupid mess is that? 
But and he now, eat, and he eat mushrooms to get big. I'd be like, is this man on drugs? Where the mushrooms even come? From? Exactly. Drugs. So now, <laughs> so now you make one, two, three games. We put we he eats a leaf and turns into a squirrel. Now we put him in cars. Now we put him in all types of different sports. Now we got his brother going through a hunted mansion. Mm-hmm. Now we got his the, the gorilla friend jumping through forest. Like, let's just talk about it. Like, unless Sony is finna build a lineage for the next 10, 15 years, that is a big investment. But Nintendo like, was just throwing darts and they just happened to stick. But I feel like that's what they want. I, I feel like that's what they want. And I feel like the issue could be is that they can't just throw darts. Like not now they now they have to now they have to be strategic. Exactly. Because you're correct. When Nintendo was coming out, it was coming at a time where people were making games for anything. Like you could have everything. A, like you could have a concept and make a game, and then it, they just the advantage was is that ha- as games you know became more popular, they could start implementing like these small ideas of put Mario in a car and oh now the mushroom you don't grow big you go fast like they had that advantage to make those innovations and see what works and what doesn't work but now we're getting into 2024 where people are more picky about games people are complaining about game prices it's graphics 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 processes 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 and you have to be a bit more just uh strategic strategic yeah with the experimentation well, my issue is they're the ones making it about graphics, like, and not saying that graphics don't matter, but like even Elden Ring doesn't look the best in every corner. But the reason it did so great was because it was a quality game. Baldur's Gate Three did so great, and obviously it's hard to replicate those successes because even those publishers didn't expect their games to do as amazing as they did. Mm-hmm. But like Sony shouldn't be focused on let me make a Mario, let me make a Mario. Sony, if they really want to improve, focus on actually making a good game. Focus on actually being experimentative. And I know that's hard when it comes to like trying to get shareholder buy-in. Mm-hmm. But at Our the same competing. time, but if y'all sit here and say, we're going to per- forcefully try to make Sly Cooper and Ratchet and Clank our Mario, that's not going to be genuine. Because older fans like me are going to be like, well, now why the hell is Sly Cooper but that's, but that's playing what I'm baseball? Saying. But that's what I'm saying, though. When everybody was bringing up all of these IPs that they did have, that could have just been the conversation of that it wouldn't feel genuine or it wouldn't feel like a full attempt at trying to bring out an original IP if we just pull something out the bucket and, and throw it at the wall and see if it sticks. But in my opinion, that's why they should make new stuff like like we've had this conversation where it's like when people are trying to invest millions and million dollars they want to invest in something that's going to work hence lord of the rings hence velma being based on scooby-doo even though it has nothing to do with og scooby-doo like they do this stuff because they're worried and they want to make sure they get their buy-in but if that's the case just do a low budget game get set aside a budget for something that is not too heavy on the graphics not too heavy on resources have a team of like 25 to 50 people and keep mm-hmm. it small, make it a four year project. Twenty million. Keep it there. I think twenty million they can throw out. I don't know if that's too much or too little for them at this point. That might be too much. Fifth ten million. He said twenty and just million. Try- that sounds like a lot. I ain't no games, but I was like, damn, twenty. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I don't know how much they cost now. Like wait, Ubisoft when they be having like teams of two hundred, three hundred people working on a game, mm-hmm. that's three hundred people's salaries. Even if they make a minimum wage, that's a lot. I I don't know. I get it. The bottom line is that I get it. I get the complaint. I'm just not really sure what they could do if they wanted something on the scale of Mario. That's going to transgress games, films, and anime. Exactly. Uh, I mean, honestly, the closest thing would be Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, those Astro Bots. Well, how that they well? Did. How well? Because you remember they put out Ratchet, Clank, Ratchet and Clank. Was it three, a couple years ago? How well did that do? Oh, Rifts Apart. Yeah. Um, I think it did all right. Like it did. It didn't just blow out the blow everything out the water. But I think it did all right to where it got its money back. Because that was like, yeah, that was like the third one in the PS4 reboot to PS5 time frame, I believe. So it did well, but I wonder. Did anybody try to go back and play like the previous ones? Did they even have those available? Because it's a thing with like franchises when you play a game. I'll I'll speak from experience. The first 
uh, Batman Arkham game that I played in the series was Arkham City. That wasn't the first one that came out. Arkham Asylum was first, but that was the Arkham City was the first one I played. And I loved the game so much that I went back and played Arkham Asylum. And then I played the next two games that came after that. So did it do enough to where people who were new to the franchise was like, oh, let me check out the previous Ratchet and Clank <coughs> games. That's what Dragon Age did for me. I played two first, and then I was like, this was cool, just to find out, oh, this was actually ass compared to the previous one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I don't... So I wonder, I wonder, even though it did well, did anybody buy into the franchise? Did they try to go back and play the other, if they were available, because I don't know. Did they try to go back and play the previous installments? Sure. Because that could have been a thing they were looking at as well. Like, if we put out a new installment of Sly Cooper, Jack and Dexter, is anybody going to invest in the franchise to try to look for the previous content? And if I mean, and if they do, then, hey, we got us something that we can latch on to. And if we make another installment, we know people are going to be checking for it. I mean, my thing is, if that's the case, and this is what they're not going to do, they're just either going to have to do like Microsoft and shell out money, but Microsoft, but Xbox is backed by Microsoft, one of the trillion dollar companies that's in existence right now. While Sony is not is not that blessed when it comes to resources, unless they're going to acquire some IPs, go on a bounty hunt, they got to create something new, and they just got to literally invest time into it. They just have to really feed into it. Like, shoot, go buy Spectros from Disney and see if Disney would give y'all let y'all hold one. Yeah, and what you mentioned. When with you bringing that up, have you been have you seen the news about that Concord game that came Concord. out? It's um Black Myth Wolf Kong has been all over my timeline and I slick want to get it. So Concord, well, you're not you're probably not gonna see anything else about it now because Sony Sony pulled it off the shelves and are giving people refunds. But Concord is a game they launched it like August, I can't remember the date, August something. And they took it off the shelves like permanently uh, recently, September 6th. But it, they had acquired it from another developer. Like the developer had been working on it since 2019, I believe. Mm-hmm. That's what I heard. Sony acquired them a month later, announced the game was coming out at some showcase. And then the game came out. It sold 10K units on. Either 10K units on Steam and 15K units on PS5 or 15K units on Steam. Either way, the total between PC and PS5 was 25K units. And they, with two weeks after the launch, they pulled it off the shelf. And that was, it had it done well. Well, even if it didn't went well, that was an original IP. So did it not do well because of buy-in like did they market it because i didn't even hear about it that's what they're saying that the rollout for the game wasn't what is their fault there's their fault like i'm and i know something but that's what i was saying i'm bringing up the situation because it's funny that you said of like you know to invest and inquire when in the situation where you invested and inquire you didn't handle the marketing you didn't handle it well that's what I'm saying. Like, if y'all want a new IP to go big, y'all have to invest in marketing, if not the same, probably more than your popular IPs. Because you're not, you're probably not going to make a Black Myth Wukong that goes viral randomly. You're probably not going to make a Baldur's Gate 3 or an Elden Ring that just naturally has a thousand streamers. Those are once a year type projects. That doesn't happen often. Like, in a lot of people's mind, that, those may be frequent occurrences. That doesn't happen for most games. Most games will never amount to that. Mm -hmm. y'all would have to create an ip and market it like it's god of war so that people can see it put it in some streamers hands get some review copies out there force ign and GameSpot to talk about it Mm -hmm. even if it's even if you don't know because that's the only way people are on social media we're digesting content 24 7 like somebody might come in and be like well if you hear about concord it's because of your algorithm exactly but i always hear about god of war and you think i ever google god of war you think i've ever looked up anything about god of war no but I will always see it. Just like Black Myth Wukong. I ain't know what that was. And out of the blue, all over my timeline. Or maybe they just need to be more confident in the IPs that they invest in too. Yeah, for sure. Because 
going just going back to the Nintendo conversation, even though there's a huge you know time gap between when Mario came out and where we are now, Nintendo was very confident in that Italian man going up them pipes, eating the mushrooms, running real fast, and jumping to the point that old dude who used to vo- voice Mario is a Mario ambassador. N- Nintendo loves their stuff so much. How many Mario parties do we have now? Like 12? Yeah, they stopped they stopped doing they numbers. Stopped numbering they them. stopped doing numbers. Like the next Mario party is called Super Mario Party Jamboree. How many Super Mario Brothers have we had? We had three back in the Game Boy when you and me was playing the Game Boy Advance slash three. color. Then they start then when the Wii came out, like they stopped calling now that I think they just called Super Mario World something. We got about t- t- twelve of those. How so many like, Mario Karts? Mario Kart Deluxe was like number eight reboot. Hey, that's like Mario Kart A is doing GTA numbers. As far as years, it's doing GTA numbers. That's what I'm saying. Like, what are we talking about here? Y'all will never compete with Mario, bro. It is honestly I, too impossible at this point. Pokemon the, ain't even competing with Mario. From the statement of that you want to compete, I agree. But from the statement of you want a franchise that could be on the scale, I see that point of view. And I feel like I, from my personal style, I don't know what you could do other than, you know, what Ryan just said, invest, you know, do a rollout. You know, you, you have to do the rollout. What he just said, you have to give it to these streamers ahead of time. You got to give it to IGN. You have to give it to GameSpot. You got to, you have to be confident in the thing that you're marketing. That's the only thing I could tell you. Or if you want to go to dive in the bucket, you might you just have to be a bit more creative of how you want to reprise certain franchises. If we if if you want to pull Jack and Dexter out, maybe try an animated series. I mean, that's what um Cyberpunk did. Cyberpunk came out, it they had that issue. They came out with the update, things got good. They came out with Cyberpunk Edge Runners that made more people go and play the game. Uh, Phantom Liberty came out. That did well. And now they're talking about the next installment for Cyberpunk. Like, Shoot. Final Fantasy 15, because 14 was the online one. I remember for their rollout, they had like a four-episode anime series drop with the game, or it dropped right before. And that was like my first Final Fantasy. I always wanted to play them in the past, but I never mm-hmm. got around to it. And I was like, oh, this is hype. Now I want to see the anime series come back. I want to see a bigger version of this. Like, y'all got to invest. They, they do this, the, or they used to, um, with comic book movies. They would release, like, comic book issues that told, like, this is what happens before the movie. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I think they did it with Black Widow. I know they did it with The Flash. Um, I think they did it with Star Wars. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember having a comic book that explains some things, some shit that happened before we got to episode three. Hmm. So like, maybe maybe that's what you have to do. You but you have to be confident in the IP that you're investing in. You got to make it stick. You got to put in the effort to make it stick. And that's the hard part. Like you're basically telling them, "Hey, y'all get twenty million dollars, and it might be new. It might not have no history." make it work yeah make it freaking work and that and that's tough but if y'all are going to complain about this that's all you really can do and like and, i know from a business mind that sucks but that's all you can do and it's not like they can't do it like if they wanted to make some anime like you guys bought crunchyroll i think in the article i had i think there was a statement from the ceo of crunchyroll of like they want to partner and bring some of these things to like the streaming service so like going back to my jack in Dexter situation what's stopping what why not be like hey let's pause on the games and see if we can do a Jack and Dexter animated series an anime if we see it sticks some people might go back and play the games and then we can make more games and we can make more movies and you know we, we tie in this shit like that hey, Ratchet and Clank would make an amazing anime series honestly yeah like and that's and that's the funny thing like Sony has a and they could work they can make a lot more anime based video games because mm-hmm. now they own 
it's not that they own the anime, but they own they have an entire monopoly over anime and manga production over here in the U.S. Like they own Right Stuff Anime now, which was one of the big, biggest manga producers. Y'all own Crunchyroll and Funimation. That's all under your belts. Y'all have those relationships with all of these publishers and developers in Japan. Make something work. Like if y'all maybe Sony just needs to create a new turn based game. Baldur's Gate 3 had a very unconventional freaking um gaming mechanic and it still did great. Make a new turn-based game that's just gonna attract a new audience. Expedition 33 caught my eye from um them that showcases those showcases during the um summer slash spring. Mm-hmm. Like they just have to do it. Like honestly, they just have to take a risk at this point. That's the only thing they can do if they want to I agree. make up for their lack of Mario. I agree. They're you they're going to have to take a risk they're going to have to experiment with something even if it fails like i get it that a failure if we want to go back to the mario situation a failure in the 1980s is significantly different than a a failure in 2024 but i mean but if that's what you guys want you're gonna have to take the risk hmm i mean Make a Game of Thrones series game. I they tried making one back in the day and it didn't hit for real. But but, with, but I don't think that would serve their purpose though, because yeah, it that's, that's not their that's not their IP. Yeah. If anything, that would give Warner Brothers more money bef- before them. <laughs> if and anything. Warner Brothers is definitely putting that on every console. They was like exclusive rights. So right. What? Like this is our biggest brand. One of our biggest brands. Hello. Like stepping out the gate. What a Game of Thrones game? Yes, that is definitely going on PC, Xbox, PS5. Shit, they we gonna put fuck- it on the Switch if I we can. I was just gonna say, shit, they might fuck around and put it on the Switch. <laughs> like lower, lower the graphics to like 720p. We gonna drop it. What like, y'all talking about? If anything, I. But like I said, I I get what they're saying brand wise, but bottom line is you're gonna have to take the risk. Hmm. So. That's all I got. You got anything else, Ron? Good luck, Sony. Microsoft, I need y'all to hurry up and produce some games with all these um developers y'all own. I want to see more from Fable and Avowed. Hurry up. Dragon you heard Phil Spencer soon. said he doesn't want to do anything with Guitar Hero? That would eat. He, he tripping. He's tripping. You don't know what's funny? I could see the reasoning for that being that right now rap is the pop music of this generation, but it's like it's not like they can just. Dr- did, well, wait, did they have a DJ Hero? Yeah, or am I tripping? Yeah, they had DJ Hero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he tripping. He Every, can make everybody, everybody had DJ Hero. Like that was not specific to any console. Like he's tripping. He's tripping. Fallout Boy is still making music. Paramore is still making music. Um, Lincoln Park just got a new lead singer. And they just debuted a single this past Friday, which I know is coming out with an album. Like I these think people, Green Bay dropped some album, Green, an album like a few months, yes, a few months Bay, ago. Green, uh, Green Day, Green Day, Day, Day dropped a new album. You can still pull people still listen to Panic at the Disco, even the even though the guy retired. Like Maroon Five, like you, he's tripping. He's tripping if he thinks that a Guitar Hero game is not worth the investment. The only reason I can see them not wanting to do that is if they're... But and you know what? No, 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 no. If Microsoft actually went into the VR space, like, for real, for real, something like Guitar Hero would, because it already got, like, the actual fake guitar, and you put on some goggles, would be fire. You look that to the side, you fire. can see your drummer, your lead singer, you looking into see the crowd. see a whole stadium in no, front of you. Hello, he's tripping. I hope he changes mind. I, I hope he changes his mind. I hope he changes his mind, because... That a revival of Guitar Hero would be insane. Honestly, I don't know what Phil Spencer's doing because the way Microsoft is lining up their games, I don't know if like next year we're just going to get hella announcements or what because they have too many IPs under their belt now. Too many. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what they do. We'll and find out next time on the Blurred Mob podcast. Will Microsoft... Um, execute with the I, the new IPs they have acquired. Will Sony finally get them a Mario? And will George R. R. Martin stop talking 
and write them and damn write books. Them books. And write them damn books. <laughs> Find out next time on the Blur Mob podcast. But let's go ahead and shut this down. So once again, thank you, Ron, for joining me on another episode of the Blur Mob podcast. I wanted to give a shout out to everybody who's watching and listening, whether this is your first time or 50th time checking us out. It is always appreciated. For future updates on anything that we have going on, make sure you follow us on our social media platforms. We're on Instagram at the Blur Mob Pod. You can find us on Twitter at the Blur Mob, and you can find us on TikTok and Facebook at the Blur Mob Podcast. And if you want to donate to the mob, we have two ways that you can do so. We have our Entertainment Earth affiliate link where you guys can get you some statues, some Funko Pops, anything your heart desires. And part of your purchase comes to the mob. We also have our Kofi link where you don't have to buy anything and you can just give us a straight donation. And all of these donations go to equipment, software, and everything that we do to bring you guys these lovely episodes. And with that all being said, this is the mob checking out. Peace. I just feel like I don't want to miss out on this experience. Ima- it. if, if it's going if look, imagine it though. Imagine the first two parts of Attack on Titan and theaters, the walls shaking, they got their surround sound.